we talk about discipleship, who is a disciple? First of all, a disciple is one who is learned. A disciple is one who is instructed. A disciple who is one who is accustomed to the processes that exist in the Christian space. He's learned. That means he's schooled in the things of the spirit. He's instructed. You don't automatically become a disciple because you got born again. Are you with me? You become a disciple because you are being taught. You are learning. So a full-blown disciple is learned. He has knowledge. He's not a spiritual ignorant individual. He's, he has knowledge. In the things that relate to the faith, in the things that relate to the kingdom, in the things that relate to the plans and the purposes of God for his generation. That's a disciple. So therefore, it means then that a disciple is a consistent learner. And you see, the learning process of discipleship does not end till you die. You will be a disciple till you die. The way the Christian life is designed is you are not going to arrive at a place where you say you are master of all. God will consistently be teaching you. So it means therefore, if you are going to be a consistent learner, it's not enough to gather knowledge from a teaching. The proof that you are learning is that you are practicing. Are you hearing me? If all you do is fill your notes with information and you are not putting those things to practice, you are not a disciple. It's just like a student that sits in class. People who I teach, for instance, when I teach you mathematics, business mathematics, business statistics, I normally tell them to come to class with a small assignment note. So when I teach a topic, for instance, I teach linear programming models, and I teach it. Once I finish teaching it, I'll now give you homework. And I used to tell them in class that a good teacher does the easy examples in class and gives you the hard ones for homework. Very good teacher. Melu Vanamaya. So I do these simple examples, then I give you the one that will, that will not allow you to watch TV. The whole idea is, when you practice, that is when learning is complete. Learning does not stop with you gaining information. Learning is complete when there are opportunities for you to practice you find somebody who says he's a prophet and all he does is call people's names and phone numbers is a sign that it's not in my mouth you hear it's a sign that thing you are thinking is a sign praise God if all he does is claim that he has angelic encounters and he doesn't know how to defend the truth of the gospel is most likely that he's fake he must know how to defend the truth and you see i showed us when i did the spiritual ordination series one of the roles of the prophet eh, is that he was a conveyor eh, a custodian of truth so most of the time when you saw a prophet come out of the cave it was because he, a deviation had occurred How, do you people read your Bibles? Most of the time, when you saw a prophet emerge, and I can give you examples, is it Jeremiah? The reason God went to root Jeremiah out was because intense deviations had occurred in Israel. Why do they call Jeremiah the weeping prophet? Why was he called the weeping prophet? Because he wept at the unrighteousness of the people of God, towards God, their unfaithfulness. 
was one thing that broke his heart. The second thing was, in the midst of their unfaithfulness, God was calling them to repentance and they turned their back on God. In that day, just like it is, it is in this day, there were men who were coming to say, peace, peace, Jerusalem will never be overthrown. Keep living the way you are living. Je nothing will happen. Jeremiah is a liar. It was so painful to Jeremiah that Jeremiah went into his cave with the Lord. He said, oh Lord, you deceived me and I have been greatly deceived. He was hoping that when he went to cry in the ears of the people, they will respond to the cries. Meanwhile, there were false prophets masquerading around and the people gladly turned their ears to falsehood. Meanwhile, every time you see a prophet on the landscape, it's because a deviation has occurred. Isaiah had the privilege to enter into a council meeting. And as he ascended into that meeting, he heard discussions that were not open to the mortals. And by coincidence, he was in that environment and he heard, whom shall we send? Who will go for us? Before he heard those conversations, he had already begun to cry, who is me? For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell where? Amongst a people of unclean lips. It was because of that deviation that existed that there was a council meeting in heaven, and they began to say, Among all these people, who are we going to send to correct this anomaly? That is the reason the prophet Isaiah was raised. So, if all a prophet does is to excite your emotions, tickle your fancies, and see things about the color of underwear their sisters are wearing is a sign that a source of information is not God. And you see the way this realm is designed, this information that excites all of us so, even evil spirits can give it. <laughs> you go to a shrine, the native doctor will tell you your birthday. He will even tell you things that happened the day your mother was, the way she pushed, her neck was bent to the left like this. He will see it. So these things that excite us, even the spirit of divination can touch it. Because those information exist in a level whereby if you dare to travel a little, you can touch it. It's not cryptid. But the things that belong to God have an encryption code and the only one that can break it is called Holy Ghost. So those things cannot carelessly be entered into even by the learned. The books are closed even to the learned. The only one that will grant you access is Holy Ghost. And when it comes to those kind of matters, the Holy Ghost does not compromise. If you are not qualified, you are not qualified. It's not an emotional matter. 